So we have looked at three methods for differentiation. We have the chain rule, the product rule, and the quotient rule. Okay? And now it comes to the point of, given uh, an exam question or otherwise, can you determine which method you should use? Because the question won't say, use the product rule to differentiate this. Use the quotient rule to differentiate this. Okay? It won't say that. You've got to be able to look at a function and say, right, I need to find dy by dx. I will have to use this rule in order to, differ to differentiate it. Okay, so let's say we've got these four examples. Okay, and we're going to work through these four examples and to see if we can figure out which method we should use. Sometimes the method will be obvious. Okay, uh, other times you may have a bit of a choice. So let's have a look at this first one. We've got y equals x squared times x minus 5 all cubed. You've got one function multiplied by another. And so naturally, we are going to use the product rule in order to differentiate this. I mean, you could expand the whole thing out and just then differentiate a polynomial. Okay, But we want to be quicker about this. Okay, So we're going to use the product rule to differentiate this. But you're also going to use the chain rule in order to differentiate the x minus 5 all cubed. Okay, So you're going to have situations where you've got the chain rule inside the product rule. So this first one, dy by dx, using the product rule then, we've got the first times by the derivative of the second. So using the chain rule, 3 lots of x minus 5 squared plus the second times the derivative of the first. So the first differentiates to 2x, and we've got the x minus 5 all cubed. Okay, so tidying that up, 3x squared, x minus 5 squared, plus 2x, x minus 5 cubed. Okay? And then if you wanted to then um, rearrange that, simplify it down, okay, factorise it, because if you wanted to then find stationary points, you'd have to factorise this. So let's say we wanted to do that. Um, we could factor out an x and an x minus 5 squared. So x and x minus 5 squared. And inside our bracket, we would have 3x left over. And we would have the x is gone, uh, two lots of the x minus 5. And so we would have x, x minus 5 squared. 3x plus 2x, so 5x. And then we've got two lots of minus 5, so minus 10. You could then pull 5 out, so factor the 5 out and have x minus 2. Okay, so if I was then being asked, well, where are the stationary points? I know that there are three, one when x is 0, one when x is 5, and one when x is 2. Okay, so, but that would be the dy by dx that would be required. So the first one, product rule. Okay. Right, second one. Now, the second one we've got y equals x cubed take away 5 all cubed. Okay, now there is no product of functions there. There's no two functions being multiplied together. There's, there's no quotient of functions. So this is just the chain rule. So we've got the 3 is going to come down to the front. We've got the derivative of what's inside comes outside, which would be 3x squared. And then we take one from the power. So tidying up, we would have 9x squared x cubed take away 5 squared. So if then I wanted to find stationary points, uh, we would have 2, 1 when x is 0, and the other at uh, the cube root of 5. OK? So that second one is just the chain rule. So we've had product rule, uh, product rule and chain rule, effectively, and chain rule there for number 2. So number three, we've got y equals x squared over x minus 5 cubed. Now, this is where you get a bit of a choice. Um, it naturally looks to be quotient rule, because you've got a quotient of functions. OK, fair enough. You can use the quotient rule straight off the bat, and that's what I would personally use. The alternative is that you could write that as x squared. So you could write that as x squared times x minus 5 
to the minus 3. Okay, and then use the product rule with a bit of chain rule as well. Now, the reason why you would want to not do that is because if you then had a question where you wanted to find the stationary points, you would be in a bit of a mess, a bit more of a mess, if you use the product rule. The quotient rule uh, deals with the problems of the fractions rather than you have to deal with it after you've differentiated. So I would go straight in with the quotient rule here. You've got the bottom times the derivative of the top, which is 2x. Take away the top times the derivative of the bottom, which is 3x minus 5 squared, using the chain rule, over the bottom squared, which is x minus 5 to the 6. So tidying up, um, we're going to have 2x, x minus 5 cubed. Take away 3x squared, x minus 5 squared, all over x minus 5 to the 6. Now, we've got a factor of x minus 5 squared in the numerator and the denominator. We can divide through there, there, and there. OK? So... I can get rid, I can cancel it through the fraction. So I would just be left with 2x, x minus 5, take away 3x squared, and dividing the bottom by x minus 5 all squared as well, get x minus 5 to the 4. OK? Now, of course, this is assuming that x can't be 5, which it can't, uh, because if x is 5, then your denominator is 0. OK? So I can divide through there. So then, what have I got? Well, I, in the numerator, I've got 2x squared take away 3x squared. And I've got this 2x take away 5. So I'm going to get, uh, well, 2x squared take away 3x squared, so minus x squared. And I'm going to have take away 10x all over x minus 5 to the 4. And then you'd probably want to factor out minus x from the numerator. So x take away 10, or sorry, plus 10, OK, over x minus 5 to the 4. And so if you were then being asked, right, well, where are the stationary points for this curve? Then you've got two. The x is 0 and x is minus 10 will make the numerator 0 and, whole, and consequently the whole fraction 0. So x is 0 and x is minus 10 are where the two stationary points are. So... The quotient rule made short work of this, combining the two fractions. The alternative um, is really going to be displayed in problem number four here, okay? Because you've got this x to the minus 2, x minus 5 cubed, which I've written in such a way that it appears natural to use the product rule. But you should keep an eye out for the fact that this could be written as x minus 5 cubed over x squared. Now, there's nothing wrong with using the product rule, as I said, but the problem is that you end up having to deal with algebraic fractions afterwards. So, I'll show you what I mean, OK? So, let's say we use the product rule first, just to see what happens. So I would have the first x to the minus 2 times the derivative of the second, so 3 lots of x minus 5 squared, plus the second times the derivative of the first, so we would have take away uh, 2x to the minus 3, x minus 5 cubed, like that. So let's tidy that up, so 3x to the minus 2 x minus 5 squared, take 2x to the minus 3, x minus 5 cubed. And then you've got to come to the decision, right, how am I going to factorise this? OK, what's the best way of doing it? Well, probably the best way is to write it as 3x minus 5 squared over x squared. And take away 2 lots of the x minus 5 cubed over the x cubed. So that then 
you could multiply this fraction top and bottom by x to get a common denominator and to combine them. So you'd have 3x x minus 5 squared take away two lots of x minus 5 cubed now all over x cubed. Now factorising the numerator, I can pull out x minus 5 all squared and be left with 3x take away two lots of an x minus 5 over x cubed. And then I've got the x minus 5 squared. 3x take away 2x is just x. And then I've got minus 2 times minus 5, so plus 10 over x cubed. And so I've got two stationary points, one at 5 and one at minus 10. The problem with this is it required me to have to deal with the algebraic fractions, which can get messy, and more messy than this, certainly. So let's see what happens when we use the quotient rule. OK, so if I go straight in with the quotient rule, we've got the bottom times the derivative of the top take away the top times the derivative of the bottom all over the bottom squared and so I now already have it in one fraction without having to deal with the algebraic fractions in between okay so let's tidy this up um, and I can also factorise, can't I? So I'm going to factor out x and an x minus 5 squared. And I'm going to be left with a 3x take away two, um, take away two lots of an x minus 5, aren't I? OK. All over the x to the 4. Now an x and the x there can cancel. So I'm left with the x minus 5 squared. The 3x take away 2x, so x. Take away 2, uh, sorry, minus 2 times minus 5 is plus 10. All over, now I've knocked an x out from the denominator as well. And so stationary points at 5 and minus 10. And just see how much quicker that was, and how much easier it was to use the quotient rule. Quotient rule is given to you in the formula booklet, so there's no reason as to why you should get it wrong. But that's how you should really start... Um, to be able to identify which rules you should use in which circumstance. And you won't always get this first time, it just requires lots and lots of practice.